once again, Hedgehog Maniacs. Sandyx17 here, back with more Doki Doki Summer Hope, a mod for Doki Doki Literature Club. Now you saw throughout the last video that discussing what happened in the aftermath of saving Sayori and everything. The ending of the last video really got my attention. I'm still contemplating whether or not Manga is truly behind all this, or if Yuri is really behind all this. I don't know. Something doesn't add up though. Find out what happens. So without further ado, let's do it to it. The old quarter was a short walk away from our neighborhood. I'd never been there before, but Natsuki seemed to know where we were going. Ah, uh, yes! I love this place! There's some great little thrift stores around here! My nana got me this skirt from the one over there! She points to a small, unassuming shop front. There isn't really much, my, this isn't really my scene, but it's worth it, ju worth it just to see that great big smile on her face. <laughs> anyway. Soon enough, we reached the cafe that they had told us about. It's a small independently run place with the elect electric style. They, see they seem to serve a decent selection of small meals. Hey, why don't we get some food here too? My treat! Ow! Feel it, Shivers! Shall we see if one of those thrift stores has a fedora for you to tip? Those sound like the words of someone who doesn't want free food. Whoa! Hey! I'm not getting hasty now! I smirk at her. I'm getting better by at verbally sparring with her. Honestly, I really do enjoy the banter we share. Banter we share. Come on, let's eat. I gesture for her to go to go through the door ahead of me. My lady. <laughs> that looks good. Jab in the ribs. Get, Tommy. Probably should have seen that coming. We enter the cafe and take a seat. It looks like we're the only ones here. So our food and drinks come pretty shortly after ordering. Whoa! Hello! Nice touch! Aw oh, man! I'm starving! Thanks, Sonyx! We start to munch down our food in relatively short order. Natsuki really does have quite the appetite for someone so small. Lunch, however, is only the pristine Pre pre pretense under which we are here. Hey, Natsuki! Hmm? So, shall we talk? Uh, yeah. I guess that's what we're here for. Look, Sonny X, I have a hard time trusting people. That's pretty obvious. And this last week has been hard for everyone. I'm sorry I left you to deal with everything on your own. Me too. It's not like I put any effort in. I'm too busy feeling sorry for myself. We were both hurting. But all we could think of, think of was ourselves. Ah, we both suck. I guess all we can do is learn from it and move on. We screwed up. But that doesn't mean we have to keep doing it. We need to stop push punishing ourselves and just try to be better people. I promise I won't I won't let you suffer alone again. I raise my coffee cup in a toast. To sucking less. Natsuki raises her ice latte in answer. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll drink to that. Silence reigns over us, over us again. Sorry. Natsuki's smile falters, 
It's clear that she has more to say and is having trouble getting the words out. Should I speak up first? Truth is, I'm just as nervous as she is. Trying to find the words to describe how I feel is more difficult than I thought. With a deep breath, Natsuki eventually breaks the silence. I really like how they do all that though. Just saying. Look! Side yes! I think we both know how I feel about you! I... I let you have my first kiss for a reason, you know? The first kiss? I haven't even considered that. Then again... That was my first kiss, too. I guess Natsuki was the first girl I ever... First girl ever to pass the Sayori barrier. Sayori barrier? What? Okay, I don't understand that. But anyway. I like you. And I mean like like you. But... But... I think it might be heading towards something more than that. So, I need to know that you're serious. That you're not just after one thing. I mean, if you are, it's okay. But just don't let me feel any closer to you. Cause right now, I'm falling for you. Natsuki. Take a look at this. I take a folded piece of notebook paper out of my pocket and hand it to her. She unfolds it and reads the title out loud. Summer Hope? Hey, that's the name of the mod. What's this all about, though? That's... that's my name! That's how it's written in Kenshin! Sorry if I couldn't pronounce that word correctly. But anyway... Yep. Why don't we have a read? Summer Hope. My name is Summer Hope. Her warmth spread throughout. Fell through the wall around her heart. I'll never let her son burn out. My heart breaks Summer Hope. Is there room inside for me? If I could just get off. Her love could set us free. My summer hope. My Natsuki. Yeah, I try to do my the MC, my voice in Natsuki and a Natsuki impression doing that. But anyway. My Natsuki? That was the poem I was going to read at the festival. To confess to you there and then. I wrote that on the Sunday after you left my house because I wanted to give you something in return for the poem you gave to me and the way it made me feel. Side the X! This... This has got to be the cheesiest, most cliche idea I've ever heard in my entire life! Was it knowing my shoe locker not cool enough for you? Jeez! Well, it well, I have work, though. Hey, you idiot. I kinda just did. She takes a deep breath, visibly shaking, but still wearing a wide smile. I think I'm done falling. Her voice had lost any hint of her usual aggressive tone. It had been taken on that sweet, fragile that I only heard once before. No bravado, no defensiveness, just Natsuki. We hold hands across the table for a while before finally finishing our food. <clears throat> we settle up and stroll out into the warm afternoon sun, hand in hand. Just feels so right. So, what now? We have to rest the day to ourselves. Honestly, I don't care. As long as it's with you. She lets out an embarrassed get shoulder. What do you want to do, Natsuki? What do I want to do? I guess... 
I want to go and look, go to my new boyfriend's house. Share out with me and Marga together. And whatever else happens, happens. Wait, what do you mean by that? That sounds perfect. Boyfriend, huh? Of course, Daddy. Come on, let's go. Natsuki, we've only known each other for a short while, but we've been through so much together. And now we're starting something wonderful. I never want this feeling to end. Never. Ever. Huh? Hmm. I smile confidently to myself as I begin my journey towards a brand new day at school. Even the daily grind hasn't seemed like so much of a drag for the last couple of weeks. She seems familiar you go running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air, like she's totally oblivious to any attention to my draw to herself. Wait. Why is this going on again? Like that girl is Sayori, my dearest friend in the whole world. Three weeks ago, she tried to take her own life, and it was very nearly successful. None of us were aware of the severity of her depression, we were almost let such a gentle soul slip through our fingers. Either by luck or destiny, we have been given another chance to help her do it. And now, for the first time since she's coming back to school. I smile to myself, and I don't find the cross like that side. Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Okay, this seems like a little deja vu right now. But anyway. Eh, I think you were thinking about ignoring me. That's me, big bro. <laughs> Still going with the big bro, huh, Sayori? Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, I don't want to make a dick that will wait or something. I flash her a white grid to let her door that kid around. Hmm. But something still seems a little off, though. I'm just saying. Fine, fine. Why did they wait for me, after all? I can't try to be mean to your little sister. Busted. Still keeping up the whole brother-sister thing. After the trauma that she went through, it seemed to be her way of grounding herself and... Reconciling her feelings for me. It was a little strange at first, but I'm okay with it. She really is like a little sister to me after all. I can't say it hasn't been working to her advantage though. She's been more persuasive than ever. Pers sorry, more persuasive than ever. Oh, yes. Can we get this done the way? Oh, my breakfast. But Sayori, you only we're already running behind, and throw us all at breakfast. Please? I feel pretty confident saying no to most people. Saying no to my childhood friend was pretty difficult. Saying no to my little sister, though? Impossible. She got me right where she wants me. Dang it. If it puts a smile on her face, it's all worth it. Okay, okay, jeez. Come on. Before you gnaw my arm off. Hey! Hey, Big Bro! After making a quick detour to, to save Sayori's appetite, we barely make it to school on time. I make my way towards my lessons and prep myself for another day of lessons. I spend most of the homeroom and history daydreaming mostly about her. I can't wait until it's time for the literature club. I only saw her yesterday, but I find myself missing her all the same. After classes, I, I wait in my usual spot outside class 3B. After a few minutes, I spot a pink, a shot of pink among the crowd leaving the class. Hey, Natsuki! Her eyes search around for the source of my voice for a moment before locking eyes with me. Through the mass of her other students to reach me. Hey, 
that you? She bound, she bound towards me and stops just about a meter away. We had decided to keep our relationship quiet in school. For now, at least. We don't want to draw any unnecessary attention while we're still finding our feet. We've been finding it hard to control ourselves, though. I'm finding it hard not, not just, just to hold close right, hold her close right here and now. The look in her eyes tell me she feels the same way. Is everything ready for tomorrow night? Hmm? What's happening tomorrow night? I tap my finger against my chin, theoretically. I know dang well what's happening. But I'm not going to miss an opportunity to mess with her a little first. <laughs> Are you sure messing around with the best girl is a good idea? I don't know. The rest will be shit. I cock, cock my head to the side. Reservation? For what? What for? The restaurant for our D A T E. Could sound is seeping into our into a voice. You didn't forget, did you? A wolfish grin creeps across my features. Oh, you! You ass! <laughs> of course I didn't forget. Table for two at the Phoenix Palace at 7.30. Ah, uh, yes! You see? Now you get to live! But now, at least... Huh? Even though we're dating now, some things never change. <laughs> anyway... The Captain Noon's reading manga, it's, it's all business as usual, especially in school. The weekends we had spent together were, were things had really changed. Those small windows were where we would get to be ourselves. Where we don't have to hide our affection. Reading manga is somehow much nicer with her arms around me and her head resting on my shoulder. Should we be getting to the literature club? Oh yeah. We should get going or Mog would be pissed. I doubt that. But it would be it, but it would be rude to make everyone wait on our on our own on our account, I suppose. I watch her as she walks ahead of me into the club room. She seems to have a much more confident air about her dick about her these days. She's less scared and quick to quick to anger in any job she makes at me harder as they should be. She got her head held high and a smile on her face. It's wonderful. Except there's something off. What do you mean? Something about the way she's moving, it's not quite right, quite right. I can't put my finger on it. Maybe I'm imagining things. I banished the door from my mind as we arrive to our, at our destination. Hmm. He says that the way she's moving. You don't think. But I gotta see this for myself. But anyway. As we enter the club room, the occupants turn to greet us. Ah! Matsuki! It's not yet! There you are! Can I get anyone a cup of tea? I could hear the electric kettle in the corner of the room. Don't worry, you haven't missed much. We've only really just got started. Yuri sets out some tea cups for everyone and starts baking tea while the other four of us, the other four of us move some, tab some tables to get it in the middle of the room. I spot Natsuki wins a couple of times as we, ha as we hit the desk around and I shoot her a concern glance which she does her best to avoid. I set up five chairs as we s and, so as and we all sit around the table while Yuri serves the tea. Yeah. I'm really concerned now for Natsuki's well-being. Hmm. Anyway. Sayori quickly scrambles for the chair next to Monica, raising a chuckle from Monica herself. Okay, everyone. Now that we're all here, let's start by walking back our first person. <laughs> what are we 
Hey, glad to have you back! Manga squeezes her hand for emphasis, and Sayori turns a shade of crimson. Crimson. So glad to see you again. If you need absolutely anything, you have you have but to ask. Yeah. Don't sweat the small stuff. We got your back. You guys. I'm, I'm so sorry. Whoa. I'm sorry I ruined the festival for everyone. Sayori, no one's concerned about that. Come on. Sayori grits her teeth, the painful memories clearly flooding back to her. As we all look at each other incredulously, what could we possibly do or say to come back from this? Fortunately, someone had the courage to at least try. Sayori, no one here blames you for that. What's important is that you are here with us now. That's all any of us want. There would be other events for the club, but you, you are irreplaceable. But please, don't be sorry. Just be here with us in our little literature club, okay? Monica! Sayori clings to Monica's arm, resting her head on his shoulder. You are so good to me! <laughs> That's what being the club president is all about! <laughs> Yeah. Wait. Wait a minute. What is going on here? What are those two getting all embarrassed about? In any case, I have an idea. Say, Monica. What is the next big event that the school's holding? Well, there's an open day for the middle school is looking to attend it. Here in, in the new year. Some of the clubs sometimes put on some stalls for that. Why do you ask? I was thinking. Yuri, do you still have the band you made for the festival? I believe so. Would you like me to bring it in? Yes, please. Ah, I see what you're planning. Sayori, do you have the festival pamphlet saved on your computer? Good. It'll only take a little editing then. Well, I was thinking. Maybe we could just do what we were going to do at the festival for that is at the festival for that instead. That way, our prep will have counted for something. Plus it would be nice to have some fresh faces to take over from us when we graduate. What do you think? Yes. Maybe, maybe like our legacy, a funny mark at the school, even after we are gone. Yeah, I thought you might like that. Monica smiles warmly at me. I've never seen her smile this genuine before. I think maybe the state of the literature club after we graduate has been preying on her mind. Maybe this will help get some closure when the time comes. I may have to tone down my poems somewhat. Hmm. Perhaps I'm your work as a little to a chore. Natsuki's supposed to be perfect, though. Wait, what? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about the middle school kids. Excuse me? I agree. I think that would work. That would work well. Whoa, time out! You best not be disrespecting my style! 
Actually, it's because I respect your style that I think you'll be good at this. Huh? For instance, the language you use is simply, but the message is always complex and meaningful. Your choice of language means that you have the best chance of being able to pass those messages on to young people. In other words, you can reach an audience we simply can't. Being able to influence future generations has a powerful skill to add, Natsuki. You know the right. You're the you're the only one for the job. Simon said it like I was putting you down. Future generations. Hmm. I suppose we could see what I could come up with. I'm a pro after all. Maybe this would be fun. Writing for kids, I mean. Yeah, you do a great job. I'm sure of it. With that, Manga Watch wraps up. After clearing up the courtroom, Yuri is supposed to head out. She flashes a wistful smile as she passes me. I know I said I'd forget about what happened, but since she made a, a pass at me after Sayori's suicide attempt, things haven't got quite the same between her and I. Yeah. Yeah. Something's up. I need to find out what that is. But anyway. She hasn't tried anything since, but it's clearly on her mind. Since Natsuki and I started dating, the two girls have been have been spending less time together. And I can't help but feel guilty. They still seem to be firm friends when they are together though. I wonder if Yuri ever told Natsuki about what happened. Wait, what do you mean? Hey! Episode X! You ready to go? Oh, uh, sure. You're so fancy today! I know what you need! Hey! That's key! Huh? Wanna walk out with me inside the X? Eh. If that's okay. I know this is kind of a Sayori and Sadi X thing. It's fine, Natsuki. I invited you, did I? Well, sure, why not? Natsuki gives me a smile I'm still not accustomed to, even after weeks of dating. Warm and loving, she's getting better at, at letting her guard down around me. She sails up to me and, and we link arms. Are you guys hanging up? some arrangements with your teachers right next week. Oh, seriously, Monica? Why do you gotta keep doing that? It's getting on my nerves. <sighs> I figured you had eased up on it. But you had to do it again, right? Anyway. I'll see you later this evening, okay? Three of us head out, leaving Monica to lock up. But wait, what's she mean by that? This evening. Maybe I'm thinking too hard. Walking home, the three of us chat idly. Part of me was worried that someone would see Natsuki and I arm in arm or blow out cover. But honestly, I'm enjoying it so much that I'm finding it hard to care. Yeah, the new son, my girlfriend, my best friend. What could be better? Hey, Natsuki! What? What kind of thing do you think Monica would have like as, as a present? A present? What for? Well, it's just... My parents are going away to work again and I'm supposed to be all alone. But Monica said she'll come and stay with me until they come back. She's even transferring into my classes to look after me there! And she helped me up so much while I was in the hospital! She came to visit me, buy me things from home, made my clothes! She's been amazing! I just wanted to get her something! Something special! That's a 
really sweet idea, Sayori. Maybe I can bake you something. We could. But then, I was thinking of something more permanent. Do you think she might like some jewelry? Jewelry? You're really serious about be this being a special present, huh? on ahead of me, leaving me standing here confused for a few moments before following on. I'm glad Monica is taking good care of Sayori though. Today has been really nice. Too nice. I just kind of wish I hadn't figured out what was up with the way Natsuki had been moving today. This is my street! Text me later, okay? Natsuki! Yeah? When are you going to tell me why why is that you were limping? Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Do you want my putting your weight on your left leg then? What's your point, Sidex? What happened? How did you get hurt? I stand up fine. Natsuki, please, I need you to trust me. What happened? Why are you are so bent on hiding it? Did someone do this to you? Oh, just shut up! Eh? Stop trying to run my life like I'm some little kid! I don't need you, I'm just doing, doing just fine! What the? Eh? Whoa. Just leave me alone! It floods her tears. She turns and flees down the street towards her house. That got out of hand fast. I've never seen her explode like that. Still, I could probably handle that better. I should have been so confrontational. But I was so frustrated I couldn't myself. Something is clearly wrong. So why won't she talk to me about it? Why is she hiding? Who is she covering for? I have touched a nub with what I said. I don't think I've ever been this unhappy to be right. I choose not to try and follow her. I'll send her a text later. If I learn anything about Natsuki, it's to let her cool off when she gets mad. I walk the remaining distance to my home. Having a bite to eat, I try to relax at home. All I do though, is run over the afternoon's events in my head over and over. Someone hurt her. Why? Was it the classmates that she's having problems with before? If that's the case, then why does she keep qu keeping it quiet about it? She never complained about them before. Ah! Can't stop worrying. Should I have? Should I have let her go on her own? Mm. I'm doing it again. Treating her like a kid. How can I expect her to trust me if I can't trust her to look after herself? Crap. I should send her a message. As I'm reaching for my phone, I hear a knock at the door. What the? Uh, hey. Anyone home? Yeah, come in. 
Hey, you. My dad went out, so I thought I'd come and see you. We both stare at each other, unsure of who's going to make the first move. Look, you don't have to tell me anything if you don't want to. You can do whatever to you. I know that. I'm just worried about you, and if you ever feel like you want to share, I'm here for you, okay? I know. You're just looking out for me. I'm sorry I spoke to you like that. It's just been worse than usual lately. I promise I'm going to tell you what's going on. I just need time. I really do trust you, but this is something I've never spoken to anyone about. Even Yuri doesn't know the whole story. So please, be patient with me. I just smile and hold her close to my res as my response. Hmm? I wish we could stay like this. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Our lips meet and, I'm, and my hands rest on her slim waist. I don't know what I'm going. I don't know what I'm going. I don't know what's going on. Clearly something big. All I can do right now is just be there for her. If it helps, then that's what I'll do. Ah oh, crap! I gotta go before Dad gets home. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Looking forward to our date. <laughs> yeah. She heads for the door and opens it. But before leaving, she turns and looks straight into in straight looks me straight in the eye. Mm -hmm. I don't really know why you put up with me sometimes, but I love that you do. I, 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 I gotta go. I gotta go do something. Before I can respond, she throws herself through the doorway. She closes the door behind her, leaving me rude to the spot, incredulously. Why do people keep doing that to me today? What's Sayori now? It doesn't matter. When you're ready to let me in, I'll be there for you. I promise. Huh? I wake up covered in sweat despite the chills seeping into the room. My grogginess melts away with a surge of adrenaline as I realize that I'm not alone. Wait, what? Who's there? Huh? Natsuki? I like when Papa comes home early. I like when Papa cooks me dinner. Uh. I like when Papa gives me allowance. Uh. I like when Papa talks about my friends. Uh. Natsuki? That. Oh no. Huh? Oh no, it's the neck! Uh. Uh. I awake with a start, thankfully alone. What? What was that? I had a nightmare like that since... Since... Just like then. It was so real and vivid. More like a memory than a dream. Picture it again. Seeing Natsuki like that in my mind's eye it induces a chill down the length of my entire body and my stomach lurches. I take a deep gulp of the water next to my bed and my alarm clock. 4 a.m. Great. I'm going to be like a, late, like a zombie today. As the image of the dream fades from my short-term memory, I try to focus on the positives. Tonight is date night. We have been a few a little on a few little dates. Got coffee, seen a movie, that kind of thing. This was going to be a big one. Dinner at the Phoenix Palace. Apparently it's the best, most authentic Chinese restaurant in the city. 
It's pretty pricey, but my parents leave me a pretty generous stipend to live on while they are overseas on business. I can afford it. It might be ramen for every meal for the next week or so, though. I hope they aren't working Sayori's folks too hard. I'm kind of surprised my mother would call them back to work so soon after what happened. I guess the show must go on. I'll be there for her like I've always have been. And now she's got Monica too. Huh? Wait, why is it just Monica team playing again? Okay, something is a so, something's definitely amiss. But that jump scare. I stumbled into the kitchen and switched the light on, temporarily blinding myself until my eyes adjust. I splashed some water onto my face to try and wake up, wake myself up. It works at least part partially. Monica, I've been trying not to think too hard about the events of the night before the festival. It tends to send me, t tends to send my mind to dark places. Still, it's just so lucky that Monica was there that night. I have just dismissed that dream as just that, a dream. I was all set to just turn around and go home. Lucky. What the hell was she doing there at that time of night? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, what was she doing there that night? What was that she said? She was investigating a hunch. How could she figure out what, what Sayori was up to, with that degree of accuracy? Maybe the time was just a fortunate coincidence, or did she have the same dream I did? I tried to I shake off the thought, this is stupid, there's no such thing as clairvoyance or prosthetic dreams or any, uh, any of that junk. Sorry if I said that word wrong, between, after, anyway. I'm going to be making myself a tinfoil hat if I keep this up. Stop Monica from reading my thoughts. <laughs> Good luck with that. I laugh off the idea and begin to pack my things for school. <sighs> I'm going to stop here. I need to refocus after that jump scare. But something's not right here. But I'll have to wait until the next video to show you more. But until then, Sandy X17 is signing out, and I'll see you guys later.